So welcome to episode <laughs> four? Four? Episode four of the Art of Show, not a show. Four. I'm not even counting the third one because you didn't spill anything. I did not spill anything. So we're on episode. episode three. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> um, I got my Mackenzie's. You guys are rocking the Dos Equis. Hot oh, Dos Equis, yeah. as always. Mostly because Mike is just stealing beer from Nick. Absolutely. <laughs> that's a, that's, what do you want next time? <laughs> Mike's Surprise favorite beer me. is free beer. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's favorite beer should be free beer. Everybody's favorite beer is free beer. <laughs> um, speaking of Mike... Uh, you were just in Florida. I was. So tell us about that trip. Did you train while you were down there? I did. Only once, sadly. But I, I got to train at uh, Gracie Tampa South. Every time I go visit my parents, I go down. Uh, Matt Arroyo is the head instructor there. A bunch of killers. So so you, you travel a decent amount. You go to Florida a lot. Yeah. Why did you choose Arroyo's gym? What makes you keep coming back? What do you get out of it? Uh, I've tried a couple of a couple of gyms down there when I went down, and as soon as I went to Matt's gym, I just I felt comfortable there. Everybody there is uh, very welcoming. The out of towners, Your people. Seems, yeah, yeah. They're it's a very heavy base nogi gym. Uh, a lot of MMA guys, and they're producing some very very talented people. The instruction's good. I mean, it's a. Uh, He's a black belt under Rob Kahn, who was Hoist Gracie's first black belt. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I didn't and, know that, that he, had, he had a Hoist Gracie lineage. Yeah, and uh, and Rob was his first black belt, was Hoist's first black belt. Huh. Possibly in America, I mean, I know it was something like it that. It sounds good. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was, he yeah. was his first. First American black belt, it's probably what it was. I, I'm not sure. Oh, really? I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not real sure about what it is. I I've heard it. Uh, don't quote me on anything. I I just kind of talk out my ass sometimes. But <laughs> but for sure, can you see sure. a Hoist Gracie lineage? Uh, like, can you see like the? Yes and no. Uh, I think Matt's been gotten very into Marcelo's style. Mm. He and and they have like a very buddy. Right? Yeah, yeah, they have a very <laughs> yeah they have a very very on, uh, on MMA base. But I, I've got the. Uh, take a class with Rob Kahn while I was down there too and he's just oh, that's cool. I mean he's he does a question and answer at the uh Gracie Tampa South. He's in North, I believe, is Rob Kahn's gym. And I know that one of the uh I think one of the black belts, recent black belts from South just opened one in Clearwater as well. Interesting. And uh but they're all amazing instructors. I I mean it's been every time I go down there, there hasn't been a single time that I haven't taken something that I've never not put into my game. Interesting. And so how different is the the structure based on what we do compared to what we do at, at Steel City? How different is the is the class style, the teaching style? It's it's definitely a lot faster paced, I think. There's mm-hmm. a lot more nogi guys. Like uh, it's almost flip flop from our gym. You know how ours is, is it like a younger crowd? Younger and older. It's it's still Both. yeah. It's still older. The, uh, I train a lot in the mornings too, and the mornings are kind of a little bit slower paced, a little bit the less people, a little yeah. bit. But the, the uh, evening classes, uh, they have a lot of really really. Well, tough a lot guys. of times, that MMA vein will kind of change the the tone of things a little yeah. bit. It attracts a different kind of crowd. Yeah, I mean they're yeah. putting out really good fighters. I mean they're having a ton of success. They always have people in World Series of Fighting. The, yeah, yeah. The gym as a whole, I think they count the whole hub. Of Gracie Tampa, like all all their little all their schools together. A lot of associations. They've, do they've that, sent yeah. a lot of people to the UFC too through huh. their MMA programs. I mean, it's it's really cool people too. If anybody ever goes to Tampa, I highly recommend any that of the is, gyms. That is the place to go. Yeah, that is the place to go. Yeah, it's it's nice when you when you travel someplace regularly. Yeah, to have like a spot. That's what I mean. Like everybody, like we talk, you know, friends on Facebook and stuff. <laughs> right. You know, I yeah. tell them I'm coming down. Yeah. What days are the yeah, classes? Absolutely. You know. It's, it's cool, you know. It's almost like I've been. This is the fifth place that uh, Master Arroyo's had a gym, and I've been at all five places since I've been coming down since my parents moved there. So it's kind of cool. I've seen that makes you a fan or a stalker. Yeah, um, may, maybe either way. Maybe <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> they've grown each time, and like their new facility is their own facility. They've uh, kind of. They were kind of like splitting with That's CrossFit and stuff like that. that. Yeah, where, yes. it's, where it's your space. Yeah, now they have their own building. They've got the cage, multiple mat spaces, and they got their own like weightlifting setup. It's it's, and I've got I've got to go there when it first started mm-hmm. at that place too. So I saw it from like basically almost like week one was when I first went, and then going back this last time, they kind of are established in there. It's the home cool. now. You know, they got That's everything really cool. set up. 
So can I ask you about what something you brought up? How do you feel about the class structure when somebody does like a question and answer? Is that something you like? I, I like I every single thing that was taught by Rob Kahn in that question and answer class that I went to, I used today. Every single thing that I've saw. Yeah. He's like the things that, the way he broke it down, the way it, it was awesome. It was just basically he sat down in the middle of the mat, everybody sat around, he said, Okay, what do you want to know? I think that's great because I've been able to participate in a few of those classes where the instructor will, you know, sit you down and just say, you know, who has a question, who has a problem where, and show me when and why. Yes. And it, it's always a risk when you're the instructor and you do the question answer. Nobody yeah. wants to ask something. Well, so not only that, um, one of our, our brown belt instructors, he's now, in, uh, he's now in California, he used to do them a lot and he got really tired of someone being like, uh, I want to work on crackhead control. And he'd be like, all right, so you get a rubber guard. And they're like, oh, how do I do rubber guard? Like, he's getting really bad questions. Right. So you have to have, like, a, the right class of people. You have to have, like, the, the right the right group. So do you have to be at a certain level before that's effective? Is that what you're trying to say? I, I think it's more a certain mindset. Right. From a student's perspective, right? To, to know what's ridiculous. Well, I don't think that if you're in one of those situations, you want to ask, like, well, how do I do this specific technique? I think it's more... Solving a problem, you find yourself exactly. inconsistent. Yeah, it's my guard gets past this exact way every time. I don't know what I'm doing. Can you show me how to shift my angle, how to set up the frames of my guard differently so that doesn't happen? Yeah. So I guess I guess you have to at least be at the point where you can be mindful of what's happening to you for you to get something out of it. But at the same time, if you're just if you can just listen, a lot of times other people's questions. You get a lot out of just what other people are having pro problems with, and you're like, oh, I didn't know I was having problems with that. But there's a better way to do this because you see, you see somebody else do it differently. You know what I mean? Well, right. Even now, like, I've just gotten to the point where now a few people will ask me questions. You know what I mean? I've finally gotten there, and now people will ask me, like, hey, what do, you, fans. what do you do from here? Like, I get stuck here. And, it, and it's kind of cool, like, to just start experiencing that, and you get to realize, like, oh, this is what I do from here. You know what I mean? And yeah. get to... To think of your solution for yourself as opposed to always being shown something it and to show yeah. somebody else that. And I think that when you have that realization, that ultimately builds you as a competitor, as an athlete, as your jujitsu game gets stronger. When you come to that realization, like, this is what I do from this position. Own it. That is what you do. Mm -hmm. Work on it. Sharpen it. Whatever you have to do. And I think like how you were saying with how it is bad for an instructor, in the way me and you both... I know exactly what you're saying. When you have a class structure, it's like, okay, we're, we have no gi today. And then we all sit around and then we go over some stuff and like, does anybody have questions? No one has a question. <laughs> Nobody ever the has way, questions. The way they structure it is, I, and I'm not sure what their schedule is right now, but I'm, I, let's say like whenever they, the, I did get to go to mm -hmm. that class, it was, uh, it was like Wednesday night at six o'clock, whatever it is, is question and answers with Rob Kahn. Oh, so if you okay, did, so it wasn't just like a one-off. It's a dedicated, it's a dedicated, it's a spot. dedicated spot a week Interesting. for Interesting. And it was, I mean, so if you were coming there, you, you basically a week? should have to know it. Or you, you if you're show, coming there, yeah. you, may, you have a, a, a week to find something that you want to ask him. You know what I it's mean? It's not where, random. Yeah, yeah, it's not like you're not just put on the spot where... Then you're like thinking like, okay, well, what do I really need to work on real quick, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a it's interesting business decision. It takes away from private. Because oh. it kind of takes away from private. So it's how a lot of black belts make a living is private lessons. Because like just running the school, you do pretty okay. But privates are like cash money. Yeah. It's an interesting decision. But at the same time, I guess it's kind of like a teaser. Because it's like, oh, you got this much out of one question. Imagine if you had me for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. <laughs> what, what? What, yeah, what would you get out of it? Yeah, I mean, it's... it's um, you could change the world. But yeah. honestly, I can... I like that class still today. It's probably... I think it was like two to three years ago. I know... I can tell you every single thing that he showed from the start of the class to the finish of the class. Like... Triangle from the back. Yep. That's why. Triangle from the back. <laughs> I know all my yep. too. Yeah. I can't do yeah. that, but I know them all. Yeah, Nick, Nick knows everything. <laughs> uh, to, to circle back to your point, you talk about how like, it makes you better because suddenly you're aware of what you do. Teaching is such a huge tool for improving yourself. Because not only do you have to like explain what you do, which makes you like think about it more, then you have to look at them and be like, no, that's wrong because you're not doing this. Right? Right. Yeah. 
you start like to in a way learn new stuff about the technique because you didn't think about it before like sometimes I'll be showing a move and I'm like I'm not sure why this isn't working for you let me do it again on you really quick to right. see what's yeah. different you start picking up different details there's a lot of random stuff in my game that I just happened to like stumble upon because I was showing somebody like fix yourself yeah. because you could just see like you're not doing that this is something I do and that's yeah. why it's not working yeah yeah, it, it's cool it's and then cool. when you break it down to that point when you're in trouble or something from that position if they're doing one thing wrong and you know that that's wrong you mentally have that step ahead of somebody that was just like maybe in that that, that doesn't like maybe a white belt a blue belt that doesn't doesn't quite know those positions, doesn't yeah. know that that submission where they're like, oh my God, this is so much pressure, I'm going to go out. But or even someone's just a step behind because you're more aware of what's yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. or if it's just like a small, like a darts choke, for instance, if it's on the on the, on the neck, then you're like, okay, well, I can ride this out. It's going to hurt. My neck might hurt tomorrow, yeah. but I'm not going to get choked because I feel that his hand is in the wrong position. Yeah. And I think that teaching really helps put those fine details mm -hmm. into perspective for you as an instructor. Yeah, almost everyone should have to teach at some point. Yeah. Teaching, you have to teach yourself. You have to be aware of what's going on during the rules. You have to be aware of why you got passed. You might not know it at that second, but you have to be able to recreate that in your mind and say, this is what I was doing. That's clearly why I got passed. You know, And, and try with it and try it again and eventually you'll figure it out or figure something else out that stops it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the only way you get better. Because like you have to, you have to problem solve. That's the only way to take a class and be like, oh, I do need that technique because I have a hole here, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to self evaluate for sure. And I, I know just like with me showing you just all, most of my game, like the things that I do, like me just showing you that and like letting you into that, like this is everything I do basically. This is what I do from here. Like knowing that, and then like roll, like even training with a training oh, partner that. Nick. that knows yeah. that then when they know what you're doing and know it that also is making you better because like i i want everybody at the gym to know exactly what i'm doing every Adorsh. single thing Adorsh. so <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's, it, when, when it stops being a surprise yeah that's when things really get interesting yeah and that's when you have to be on point can i do this if you know i'm going to do it yep like so, that that's when you're good so how do you feel about that when you know we roll every day like yeah I pretty much know what you're gonna do to me. I yeah, and I, I that that's part of my thought process. You know what I mean? Right. And I and I know I know what you're good at, and that helps make me better. Because so to your game, uh, to give you guys some background, uh, Nick plays a lot of the newer stuff where my game is like really boring and basic and simple, and I'm just like I plod forward very deliberately and slowly. And, and Mike's game is pretty varied and dynamic as well. So you guys have very. You're, you like taking risks, you like the rolling back takes, you guys do some interesting stuff. So I know I need to be good at understanding how that works and how to defend it and where you guys can do that. So like I love getting to those positions where you can do that stuff to me because then I can look at something new and interesting because I won't be putting myself there, if that makes sense. So it's good that I understand your game because I can go to the points that I want, that I know I need to improve, right? Like 50-50 guard. I will never choose to play 50-50 guard, but I know you guys will play 50-50 yeah, guard. Yeah, we end up there quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, and I I can't just be like, well, I don't want all this new final stuff. I'm not, I need to know how to defend it. Back in my day, we walked both hills both ways. No. Back in my day, we just did cross-knee passes. Yeah, yeah. 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 both ways in the snow in Brazil. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> right. Right. But I don't think either, neither one of us really like to even hang out where it's like the 50-50 where you hear the stalling and stuff. Yeah. As soon as we hit there, both of us are... Yeah, but just because aggressively attacking, you guys, you guys will play. So the fifty fifty guard, I feel like, opens up with a lot of the newer guard styles. Yeah. it just happens. Your like get you back. fall yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, in this for sure. happens. So whether you like do it deliberately or not, it just you guys are still You're gonna more aware of it and how to use it than I am. So it's good for me to to get there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I don't I like that I know what you're going to do. I like that you know what I'm going to do because that way, if if something new that I try works. I know that it worked. I know that it wasn't you having a lack of knowledge. You yeah. know what I mean? It's weird when you roll with somebody else, though, that doesn't know what you're going to do. Oh, yeah. Then it's like, oh, that was easy. That was easy. Well, not even that. Like, things you can't normally get away with. You don't have to make it to step five. You got away with step one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. It's it definitely... Uh, 
especially with doing like a lot of the new stuff like the lapel tie downs like back, like last episode the worm guard we were talking yeah. about worm guard for us being like into it and using it when we're putting it on someone that has no clue what it is it's kind of you know but it's good for us at the same time because you're getting those reps in with a live partner yeah. that doesn't quite know it, but they know enough to react. Well, what ends up happening is you end up being a blue or purple belt at warm guard, and you're using it against somebody that's a white belt at defending warm guard. Mm-hmm. Whatever their actual belt is is kind of irrelevant. Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter yeah, at all. They just, their defense against warm guard is zero because they don't know it. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's still good. It's just a different kind of good. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that was a cool little riff intro we did. Um, I have no idea how long we're going, so we should probably move on to our new story. All right. <laughs> and, uh, I just want to say that going back to Gracie Tampa, the, yeah. the first time I had trained there, uh, Matt had been retired from the UFC already. He mm-hmm. was on the Ultimate Fighter and had some fights, and he did tell me that the reason why he quit was to make it to ADCC, and that was his goal at the time. And I just would like to congratulate that he has done it. He, yeah, that's he very cool. came up to the trials in very Virginia, cool. uh, West, West Virginia, West Virginia. Yeah. and uh, he won, and he's going to ADCC. Now. So that's that's awesome. <laughs> Congrats, man! Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's awesome. It's so great, in Tampa. Yeah. Check out, check out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's very cool. highly recommended. Yeah, speaking of like, so if you're ever traveling anywhere and you need recommendations, shoot us an email or post on our Facebook. Because between the three of us, we can find somebody to give you a recommendation. Yeah. We got friends. Yeah, all the time somebody's like, well, I need a gym in Baltimore. I'm like, I don't know any, but it's, well, I'll post on my Facebook and somebody will get me friend 10 <laughs> recommendations. So, yeah, they're very cool stuff. And it's a junior BJJ. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff all over the place. It's hard to know it all. Yeah. Um, moving on to our first news story. Uh, is the sport outgrowing the IBJJF? So, uh, T.P. Grant, uh, he's a kind of a personal colleague of mine who writes for Bloody Elbow. He's a pretty prolific MMA journalist at this point. He's not, um, doesn't get the same credit as like a Jack Slack does for striking, but yeah. T.P. Grant does some really good grappling breakdowns. So after like UFC events or something, it's a great way, to, I think it's called the Judo Chop. Does some some interesting breakdowns. So he's a, he's a talented purple belt, I believe. I don't know if he's a brown belt yet, but uh, he's, he's a tough purple belt. So uh, this is a quote from his article. Uh, for people trying to make a living as a jiu-jitsu competitor, it's starting to make less and less sense to treat IBJJF events as the premier events of the year. The evolution of professional grappling promotions increasing give top grapplers a different path, one that offers better athlete support and better incentives for the athletes to return, and more open rule sets. So basically the argument is, since the IBJJF doesn't pay their top athletes, it's less and less interesting for the best grapplers in the world to do IBJJF. And um, Grant argues that they're not signing up for IBJJF anymore. Like the recent worlds, there are a lot of big names that weren't there. Right. Because they've won it before and somebody is paying them, period. To be somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to, to be somewhere else. Yeah. So, what do you guys, what, do you, what, what is your reaction to that? How do you feel about the IBJJF? Is it still relevant? Is it becoming less relevant? If you want to ask me, like in general, as a. As an organization, we all know that they do make a profit. So, if, wherever you stand on that, I don't want to get in that argument. But I think you, I think we can. We can. Well, they do make a profit. Nobody's getting paid. They did try a few tournaments last year. I think it was the pro something, the BJJ pro. A few people, you know, there were prizes. But in general, if you win the worlds and you're not getting a paycheck, that's pretty stupid. Um, I do think it should be only for black belts because. In sport divisions, why are you? If you if you want to win money, you're got to be at the top. Simple yeah. as that. Um, and the IBJJF. Other than that, I do think they they have. I like the professionalism they present. I like it's that really well mats start on time. Mm-hmm. I the suits and that are kind of iffy, but I do like that it's official and they're wearing the same thing. It don't have to be a suit, but wear the same uniform. Um, Gi checks and all that. I like that it's official, but it can be a little less official. Come on, if somebody's it's a millimeter short, cut them a break. But if it's you know three inches short, all right, let's get let's get concerned. Um, but I do think he's, it's he's run serious. pretty it's run pretty well. No, I do because I participated in their <laughs> tournaments and it was an amazing time. I like that it was. I guess people say it's not professional, but walking out on that mat in front of what was a lot of people, I thought it was cool. I yeah. thought it was a cool experience. I thought. The you know it, it felt official and that's the way it should feel when you do a tournament. It felt official, not like I was competing in a high school gym. 
It was college gym. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was really cool. And where I think that's going with the professional events, if somebody's going to pay me money and I dedicated my life to this, I'm going to chase the money, you know what I mean? The exposure's there with the IBJJF. You want to say you want a world championship, but until they start paying athletes, yeah, if people boycott, I understand completely. They're going to chase the money, and then eventually the IBJJF will have to pay them. It's I, as simple as that. I think the rules are hurting them, too, a little bit for what they Every are. Every year, there's some new weird wrinkle that they yeah. introduce. Like, yeah, I just... Uh, the. Uh, I want. I like. I mean, I'm a fan of submission only. That's just kind of more, more fun. I don't like points and time limits, and I, I'm more, more prone to that. I'd rather go for 45 minutes and, you know, sweat it out and grind it out. Even if it is the first match and there's five more matches, I'd have more fun in that first grueling long match than I would. But they would stay there all day. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I but, get yeah for me. sure. I like the idea, but like. There's, when you have that many competitors, there has yeah, to be a time limit, yeah. and there has to be some sort of point system. You can't leave them there all day. There's no way. There's Unless too many competitors. The way that like uh, that Eddie Bravo Invitational is with uh, the the, the they're overtime. doing like a time limit in the overtime. Like I think that's a really good structure. It is an to, amazing. It, point, I mean, it's it's worked when out I really see well. that. I I want that to be like gathered in and spread out oh, more than legit. just that one tournament you know it's and i think what grace watch. gracie worlds is also or there's another one that they, he's kind of he's kind of basing it off something that they were doing there's another sub format that he yeah out, and yeah. then he kind of built off of that i believe but you know they're out there but it's what the good fight came around this way and i mean that was a so it, it was very small it was you know, but it was a very fun tournament to go to. But that's not where the money is. The yeah. money is in these few big name tournaments. You got to go out to Abu Dhabi because Abu Dhabi is going to pay. Yeah. And, and that's what the, that was that was the point that, that, that Grant made in the article that a lot of people opted out of IBJJF to focus on ADCC. Can't yeah. blame Because why? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Abu Dhabi is the biggest paying tournament I imagine right now for submission grappling. Sheikh's got money. He's got and, money. And, and to, got back. Yeah, and I think on I, I don't know, to me. If you win Abu Dhabi, that's it's the same thing. It it's more to me almost. Like I don't know, like like if somebody's like I'm an Abu Dhabi champion, like I would like that to me. Just I don't know. To it, me, that's the no gi thing. Yeah, the worlds in the gi. Yeah, same deal. Big difference. No one way or another. You're awesome at grappling. Yeah. if you win at that level, is is worlds and Abu JDF just as prestigious as it used to be? Do you think? I th- I think this year we've seen a drop out with some of the bigger name competitors, but. It's still the best of the best. Maybe not all of them are there this year, That's but true. but in the finals you're gonna face one of the top competitors. Mm-hmm. And there was yeah, also so. some other big tournaments around. I I think around the time too, probably that people were kind of invested in, and and I think that that pulled some even the, you know the world probably pulled some people from those ones. You know, yeah. it's, then it's people trying to trying to decide which way to go. You know, yeah. there is that kind yeah. of like rough weird point for I, I think even at the highest level they're having that same you know which way do we go with this yeah it seems like IBJJF you know it, it, I think uh, I don't know if Grant would agree with this but just based on the way the article's put together it's almost becoming a feeder organization for Five Grappling for Polaris for Metamoris because it's like okay these guys are good yeah then this guy's interesting enough that he can sell a pay-per-view or this woman's interesting enough she can sell a pay-per-view I mean it makes sense because they're not getting paid, so they're going to go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can come up as your purple, brown, and then your black belt. At that point, like, if you want purple belt worlds and brown belt worlds and you become a black belt, these organizations are clearly starting to message them. Like, hey, uh, Dylan Dennis got invited to Abu Dhabi. Yeah. He just got his black belt. Yeah. Um, he's amazing. But he, had, but he had a high-profile match event, and yeah. a lot of media coverage. So not just Meta Morris, BJJ Axe came up to cover him because right. of Meta Morris, right? Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It matters a lot. My cat's freaking out, so you guys can hear <laughs> scratches and stuff. It's uh, it's Cat Cobain. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it, I think I think we are at the turning point, right? We're gonna see. There's gonna be money coming shifts. into the sport eventually. I don't know how much money. Yeah. Enough for at least the top guys. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they're are, they're already making a living, but you might not have to own an academy when you're 20. 20 years old you know what I mean you might be able to make it out of just competitions yeah, at least a living I don't think we'll ever see a bunch of IBJJ or uh, the, you know those type of like the gi matches like the points matches 
on TV. No, I, you know, I don't. Even that's where dogey, it's. I don't. Yeah, that's I don't what, know if it'll it's ever it's just, be mainstream. Yeah, I yeah, don't think just, we want it to be. I don't. I don't think it's the best thing for it. I, I think it probably would even hurt it. Maybe for the the other people looking at it, you know, they somebody that's the stalling. Now that the UFC is so mainstream, they like really don't even have a decision in it anymore. The athletic commission controls pretty much everything, all the decisions now. Yeah, I maybe mean, on matchmaking, right? Right. Yeah, it's yeah, it's strange. You know what I mean? They know the refs are a problem, but they can't do any change because it's not their call anymore. Yeah. And, 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 and the judges, judges are a problem, and they can't. The judges are right, a the huge judges, problem. Yeah. And, and that's just the way it goes. You know what I mean? Sometimes when it grows and you don't have the control anymore, it actually makes it worse. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would agree. I, I mean, I would definitely agree with that. It's a uh, word of word of precipice, if you will. Yeah. Big change. Big change is coming. So let's move on to our, uh, our last story here. So uh, we recently released Jeff Rockwell's sit-up escape system. Okay. So you guys are at different exposures, le- different exposure levels to it. Uh, Nick and I both trained with Jeff. Uh, Nick's seen a lot of the footage. You've seen some of the footage, right? I've watched a good bit of the... Yeah. I've, I've gone through the like the like what you sent me. I've yeah, gone the, through uh, it. Yeah, the, uh, the cloud instructional. Yeah, right? yep. Yeah. Um, but you haven't worked on much of the techniques themselves. I right? use it. I do use it. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, I, I was not aware. I teach yeah. them when you're not around. Oh, that happens. <laughs> yeah, from, from the, the, the little stuff that I, from the no-gi classes. Yeah, and, I'm going to go and start playing the video while you guys are talking here. And I've, I Step have used up. it from, uh, I, I find myself doing a lot of the, you know, pushing the arm out and mm. like, mm. and it's almost, it's just like where I'm seeing it, you know, I'm not. My game is more like I'm keeping people tighter right yeah. now, I think, from bottom, where that's kind of you're making the space and getting back to guard. I would almost want the pressure to work the sweeps. You do play a weird bottom. Yeah. Just just going just gonna to yeah. throw that out there. Yeah, it is kind of. It's, it's odd. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of weird. It's strange. <laughs> yeah. It's like but, very unorthodox from yeah, that position. I would, yeah, I, yeah, I guess I could see that for sure. <laughs> but, like, but with those unorthodox and that weird like me pulling somebody down while like i'm like please more pressure they don't want to pressure and when they put like posture up i find myself using like the meerkat type stuff and the oh, i guess you, you know, were in some of those classes yeah, yeah. yeah i've seen some of it yeah, yeah so like that I, I am using i i hit it pretty frequently it's while I'm using. it works yeah well that's so when we released one of the teaser videos a lot of people were like oh that looks like a white belt mistake move and it was like one of the first Facebook comments we got was well, like, oh, that looks that. like a terrible thing. And it's like, who else would use this? And I was like, here's the Marcelo Garcia video of him teaching. <laughs> <laughs> teaching the setup is yeah, here. it's very popular. It's just not mainstream yet. Yeah, it's a lot of the top guys are doing it. Uh, Ryan Hall's defensive guard, he talks about some of the concepts. Yes, right? Marcelo Garcia does a lot of the stuff. And those are big inspirations for Jeff when he put the system together. Um, I mean, I know we're selling the products, so I'm really biased. But Jeff was the first person I've ever seen that put it together into a system. Yeah. Like, here's the big picture of how this works. Right. It's like, uh, it's almost, I hate to compare it to this, but it's like, Eddie Bravo laid out such a great plan with the rubber guard. Mm -hmm. And Jeff's done that. You know what I mean? When this don't work, you go here. When this don't work, you go here. When this don't work, you go here. It makes it so easy that anybody can learn it, and it really does work. We've all played with it at this point, and it's yeah. kind of embarrassing. We recently <laughs> had one of his students come to the gym that's a white belt that hasn't been training more than six months, and he's doing this escape to people, and they're getting it upset. Is, yeah, it, it, is anno- it is so annoying, and he's, he's, he's a little bit smaller than you, even, I'd say. Mike, he's... I wouldn't say small to me. Well, pretty he's, small, but <laughs> he's, he's he's not a big guy. No, he's definitely right? my size. And, and I, no, I I went to get on mount on him, and he did like a reverse frame to escape mount, and I I couldn't stop it. And I was like, I was really upset. <laughs> I was really frustrated. <laughs> but then I was like, okay, well, you work with Jeff. I'm I'm okay with this. But right. he's, he's frustrating a lot of people with it just because it's it's it looks like it's weird. It looks like it wouldn't work, but the structures are really sound the technique's really sound the timing makes sense with how popular it's getting you can you you can't say it doesn't work everybody's talking about it and it's just becoming mainstream now yeah it's it, crazy it, it, it has and it, but in it, it it makes sense in like basic jujitsu principles right basic escape is you do not want them to have your head right block the cross face and it's one of those things that we kind of start to ignore i feel like at the at the lower levels with with white belts where it's like ah check the hip and they, they get in the habit of letting someone just get their head 
as soon as you get someone to, as soon as you teach someone to not block the head, as soon as you teach someone to block the head grip, rather, it it transforms their game. Like there's another white belt in our gym that he's been working on this for like six six seven months. Tom Akata. Tom. Yeah. So Tom Tom is. I want to say he's, he's my size. Yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not a big dude. And it feels like he hit a brick wall when he hits the collar tie from the sit-up escape. He's good at it. And, and like the first time he did to me, I was like, I was pissed. I was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you're not allowed to do stuff. <laughs> like, I'll stop coming to class. Yeah, yeah, no more, no more. It works really well. And everybody says, oh, well, you expose your back. Not really? You do and you don't. There's ways to stop that too. Right? Yeah. Ryan discusses them in his DVD, but there's other ways. You'll figure it out. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a really interesting system, and uh, I said this about uh, about Matt's stuff too, Matt Curley's stuff. It fills a hole in the in the game that you didn't think you had, didn't know you had. They were so obsessed with shrimping, right? Well, shrimping only works if your hips are free. Right. If your hips are trapped, then your shoulders are free. Then you can sit up. So it this kind of like rounds out the rest of your game. All these people like freak out trying to shrimp when you can't. It's not going to improve you, right? Yeah, yeah. You're you're burning energy and you end up gassing out, and then the guy chokes yeah. you. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I I like it just from an offensive with just like rolling with you guys while doing it, just because it's like a it's something that you don't normally see too. So even just with like it's like little infusion into the gym. You, yeah. you start to see new stuff that because sometimes doing the same you know you can pass the same way it, it gets it almost it gets stale you almost mm-hmm. know what's happening so when it's like oh there's this new weird pressure it's like <laughs> how where do I go now like how can I figure out how to play with this or defend this or how to not get just completely shut down by this right I, I look at it as that way too like okay now there's this new whole thing that like people are going to be figuring out the opposite of you know right. what how to how to break this down, I think that that's good for it even, too, with it getting more mainstream with all that. You it know, does make things We've already been yeah. there. I've already yelled at Marshall. I said, this is dumb. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to go back and reset and repass your guard because it don't work. <laughs> and then, you know, he, he let me in on the next chapter because the yeah. book wasn't out yet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it wasn't fair because I was, like, showing just it was ahead. pieces of it. And I wasn't around and I'm, like, working on the book with Jeff. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to keep this to myself for a while. There's nobody needs to see this. <laughs> chapter 5 is my favorite for sure. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So chapter five is the the counters. Yeah, it's like the I think it was like the more obscure ways. Oh, the new band stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sit up escaping out of like north mouth, south. North and, south. Yeah, that's that's kind of like a place where I mean north south escape. All of us know the exact same one right now off the top. Of our head. <laughs> right. All of you know the if you do jujitsu, you know the exact same. Yeah, yeah. We all know which one the first one that comes to your mind. So it's cool to see like. Somebody doing a little bit, something different, you know, a new new way to do it. It looks like voodoo the whole time. And training with Jeff, he's out in State College uh, in Pennsylvania, but where, where Penn State is. It's, to see it at his level is nuts. Like, you can't touch him. Like, you feel like you cannot get a grip because as soon as that forearm hits your collarbone, you're like, I'm dead. Because it goes right into a seated guard game. So it goes right into butterfly sweeps really well, right into the the, the one legged X guard, because that's how that's how Marcelo's that's game the, works. That, that's the next level stuff yeah, right there. I'm surprised if Gary don't get on this soon, I'll be surprised. <laughs> you know what I mean? Him and his crew, if him and Eddie and uh, Gary or Gordon, they don't start doing it, I'll be really surprised because they like to escape from out and they'll they'll do that hip heist. Yeah. And if they start hitting those sit ups right into the single X and yeah. the, to reaping and the heel hook. Yeah, it's it's, there. it's it's a it's a great it, it, it's, it's a lot more offensive than a lot of escapes because of that too, right? Because those options are there, um, and Jeff plays it into Jeff has a unique crucifix game too, which is really interesting because he'll play the crucifix with a leg in, so instead mm-hmm. of just like pinching the arm between your legs, he pinches the arm and then hooks a leg with the other leg. Huh. So like if I'm next to you in turtle. I've got your arm trapped, but my leg closest to you is between your legs. Uh, okay. Then when I roll you over, I can lace your leg and the arm. Oh, that's cool. It's a it's a Barrett Yoshida variation. That Barrett Yoshida does a lot. Like if you watch Barrett Yoshida do crucifix stuff, Jeff's like a Barrett Yoshida addict. He like loves his stuff. <laughs> so like goes Marcelo and Barrett, I think with 
Jeff top, yeah, it's top a weird influence. like it's a weird infusion of <laughs> styles <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff's on Grinder now too like, <laughs> I, we gotta stop bringing up Grinder every episode it's, better it's better getting every weird time. it's getting really weird people are gonna be like are they uncomfortable are they trying what is, what is going on yeah, we're definitely weird oh uh, man so yeah check out uh, check out the Cinemascape there's a big chunk of the book that's for free so just give it a look um, and Jeff's really cool about answering questions and stuff he just like loves sharing jujitsu so feel free to ask questions about it too and I think we'll wrap up the episode here before we get any I was really hoping not to do Grinder in episode 4 maybe episode <laughs> 5 we will not talk about Grinder. sorry so thank you for watching um, our shout outs here uh, Jitsu Magazine thank you for your support uh, check out my stuff in Jitsu Magazine they're big uh, big artichoke fans I really appreciate that uh, we're looking for sponsors as always uh, Nick is really hungry and poor he could he could use sponsors so he can go compete and uh, train a little bit more. Um, did, I, did I offend you by saying you're poor? Didn't bother me. Actually, he's <laughs> a baller. He just like makes it rain at the club. You 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 look like you club a lot. Just Do you want? Yeah, you, I look, you, you I, look like a clubber. He's got two yeah. of those money guns. He didn't even buy one. He <laughs> two, two of the money guns. He's, he's always fist pumping. <laughs> you got it right, guys. You heard it here first. <laughs> so uh, so so Nick does all the production for the podcast. Uh, so he's doing it right now for free out of the goodness of his heart. So if you uh, support the podcast, you're supporting Nick. And help Nick compete more. He's really talented blue belt. Um, he's pretty good. Uh, Mike and I help him a lot, so obviously he's awesome. Yeah, he has to be. Yeah, he has to be great. <laughs> uh, so thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. See you later.